Hey guys, welcome to my video on amyotrophic collateral sclerosis. So I'm going to start out by encouraging you to please subscribe and have notifications turned on. So amyotrophic collateral sclerosis is a disease that affects the brain and the spinal cord. And I refer to it as AMS. So AMS stands for always maintain sensory. So regardless of the severity of the disease, the sensory tract is always going to be intact. So Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis attacks the upper and lower motor neurons. So just a refresher, both upper and lower motor neurons are present in the brain and the spinal cord. Upper, upper motor neurons form several tracts that originate in the brain. So they originate either in the motor cortex or the brain stem. Cortical bulbar is a major tract that starts in the brain and ends in the brain. So it originates in the cortex and ends in the brain stem. Whereas cortical spinal originates in the cortex and ends in the spinal cord. The upper motor neurons communicate with lower motor neurons. So the lower motor neurons are located in the anterior column of the spinal cord and anterior roots, as well as in the brain in, as in the form of cranial nerve nuclei of cranial nerves. Bulbar versus pseudobulbar is an issue that needs to be discussed. So cortical bulbar tract, as I mentioned before, is when the upper motor neurons from the motor cortex terminate in the brain stem. The bulb is a structure on the medulla oblongata, which is actually the lower motor neurons of cranial nerves 9 to 12. If there is destruction in this bulb, which is the lower motor neurons of cranial nerves 9 to 12, it's called a bulbar palsy. And if this is in, this is how the disease kind of commences, it's called a bulbar onset amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. The prominent distinguishing manifestation is tongue fasciculations. And there are other um, clinical signs like nasal speech and saliva dribbling, but tongue fasciculation is a very prominent distinguishing manifestation. Now, if the destruction, if the motor neuron destruction is only or mainly in the cranial upper motor neurons in the cortex, there's going to be something called a pseudobulbar palsy. So that's label effect, crying spells, brisk jaw jerk. There are, of course, findings that are kind of common to these two uh, common to bulbar palsy and pseudobulbar palsy like dysphagia, so I did not mention them. I only mentioned the prominent differentiating findings. So in general, when we talk about amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, of course, it's a disease that acts throughout the CNS. And as I mentioned before, there can be a bulbar onset, which where you would have kind of the tongue fasciculations, the nasal voice towards the beginning. If there's a spinal onset, the intrinsic muscles of the hands and or feet will be a initial presenting clinical finding. An interesting fact about uh, myotrophic lateral sclerosis is that ocular motor and abducens nerves are rarely affected. So these are the muscles, these are the nerves that innervate the extraocular muscles. And it's hypothesized that they use, they're structured differently than the other nerves. And they also use glutamate differently than our other nerves. And that's why they are rarely affected. And if they are, it's very late in the disease. Pathophysiology. So what amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is caused by is a defect in superoxide dismutase 1. And a defect in superoxide dismutase 1 along with ubiquitin has been implicated in motor neuron death. So you have those inclusions and a massive amount of protein in the dying neurons. Genetics has been implicated in less than one-fourth of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis cases. Diagnosis and management. So it's diagnosed by EMG. The, there's a drug called Relazole, which inhibits glutamate release. 
presynaptically in the motor neurons. So it is used to prolong survival and offset the need for mechanical ventilation. Because remember, you have those muscles that are needed for breathing, for those intercoastal muscles. And when you have a disease that's progressing, you need to make sure that the patient is breathing properly. That's something that you're always worried about. So I just wanna thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe and more videos coming soon.